Section three of Hero and Leander. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. Hero and Leander by Christopher Marlowe and George Chapman. Section three. First Sestiad, part three. Heaven's winged herald jove-born mercury the self-same day that he asleep had laid enchanted argus spied a country maid whose careless hair instead of pearl to adorn it glistered with dew as one that seemed to scorn it her breath as fragrant as the morning rose her mind pure and her tongue untaught to glows yet proud she was for lofty pride that dwells in towered courts is oft in shepherd's cells and too too well the fair vermilion knew and silver tincture of her cheeks that drew the love of every swain on her this god enamoured was and with his snaky rod did charm her nimble feet and made her stay the while upon a hillock down he lay and sweetly on his pipe began to play and with smooth speech her fancy to assay till in his twining arms he locked her fast and then he wooed with kisses and at last as shepherds do her on the ground he laid and tumbling in the grass he often strayed beyond the bounds of shame in being bold to eye those parts which no eye should behold and like an insolent commanding lover boasting his parentage would needs discover the way to new elysium but she whose only dower was her chastity having striven in vain was now about to cry and crave the help of shepherds that were nigh herewith he stayed his fury and began to give her leave to rise away she ran after went mercury who used such cunning as she to hear his tale left off her running maids are not won by brutish force and might but speeches full of pleasure and delight and knowing hermes courted her was glad that she such loveliness and beauty had as could provoke his liking yet was mute and neither would deny nor grant his suit still vowed he love she wanting no excuse to feed him with delays as women use or thirsting after immortality all women are ambitious naturally imposed upon her lover such a task as he ought not perform nor yet she ask a draught of flowing nectar she requested wherewith the king of gods and men is feasted he ready to accomplish what she willed stole some from hebe hebe jove's cup filled and gave it to his simple rustic love which being known as what is hid from jove he inly stormed and waxed more furious than for the fire filched by prometheus and thrusts him down from heaven 
he wandering here in mournful terms with sad and heavy cheer complained to cupid cupid for his sake to be revenged on jove did undertake and those on whom heaven earth and hell relies i mean the adamantine destinies he wounds with love and forced them equally to dote upon deceitful mercury they offered him the deadly fatal knife that shears the slender threads of human life at his fair feathered feet the engines laid which the earth from ugly chaos den upweighed these he regarded not but did entreat that jove usurper of his father's seat might presently be banished into hell and aged saturn in olympus dwell they granted what he craved and once again saturn and ops began their golden reign murder rape war and lust and treachery where with jove closed in stygian empery but long this blessed time continued not as soon as he his wished purpose got he reckless of his promise did despise the love of the everlasting destinies they seeing it both love and him abhorred and jupiter unto his place restored and but that learning in despite of fate will mount aloft and enter heaven gate and to the seat of jove itself advance hermes had slept in hell with ignorance yet as a punishment they added this that he and poverty should always kiss and to this day is every scholar poor gross gold from them runs headlong to the boor likewise the angry sisters thus deluded to venge themselves on hermes have concluded that midas brood shall sit in honour's chair to which the muses sons are only heir and fruitful wits that in aspiring are shall discontent run into regions far and few great lords in virtuous deeds shall joy but be surprised with every garish toy and still enrich the lofty servile clown who with encroaching guile keeps learning down then muse not cupid's suit no better sped seeing in their loves the fates were injured end of section three recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey